In 2012, a committee of sexual health nursing clinicians and educationalists from across London got together to work out a framework of what should be expected, both in clinical practice and by educational providers, of newly qualified or graduate nurses compared to those working at a postgraduate or advanced level of practice. The committee was led by my dear friend, Dr. Cathy French, an honorary fellow of the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health and a nationally and internationally renowned expert on contraception and reproductive health nursing. The following diagrams are from the Level 7 selection that we produced as part of that committee in our final published report. You'll notice here that they talk of three different aspects of professional practice relating to uh, clinical care, quality and theory. I'm not going to go through each and every um, item written on these slides, but you'll see that what we did was to draw up what we expected people should be able to do at a given level. So all of these for level seven, we considered them to be postgraduate and therefore for any nurse working in sexual health services at um, an advanced or a developed level of practice. These are what we considered they should be able to map against. Of course, these are specific to sexual health, and I'm just using them here as an example. So for whichever field of practice you actually work in, consider how you might um, adapt these for your own areas of practice. That first diagram that started off talking about practice actually focused on clinical expertise required of somebody working at postgraduate or level seven. Here you'll notice that they're equally required to work in professional and managerial positions as well. So just cast your eyes down a few of these to get an idea of what is expected when a person is working at postgraduate level. And of course, working at postgraduate level, there is an expectation that a person is um, not just aware of uh, research and evidence-based practice, but they're actually able to engage with it and even to help and enable others, such as junior staff, junior colleagues working in their fields of practice. And as part of research and development within various trusts, there's usually a requirement as well for those working at postgraduate level to be engaged with and to understand audit. And if you cast your eyes at the bottom of this screen, look how it's showing that um, a level seven uh, practitioner should be working as a positive role mo model in the leadership to guide others, especially more junior staff and around areas of research. The third dimension of this clinical and academic expectation was that the uh, clinician should be able to have an advanced level of theoretical understanding for their field of practice. So here you'll see that it relates to anatomy and physiology, but at an advanced level and completely different to that which they would have gained at undergraduate level. And finally, the roles incumbent on um, an advanced practitioner, whatever the title is, um, the, the expectations on them to be able to lead their profession and to um, take on various managerial positions as well. So leadership, management, professional enhancement, all of these were seen as being relevant to this level seven um, practitioner. As you cast your eyes down all of those preceding slides, hopefully you will have noticed that the very final element on each and every one of them, whether they were talking about clinical expertise, um, leadership and management, different types of uh, research, audit, education, whatever aspect uh, the, the level seven academic practitioner was working at, they were required to be a positive role model for junior staff and peers. Remember, this is just one other model that you may wish to consider elements of, especially as you're working for your own professional development and your academic achievement.